Adam Gumbert asks, For Mr. Branch, watching the new Logan trailer, it is interesting to me the way it's looking. Doesn't look like any Avengers superhero movie. If you didn't know the characters, you may even not know it was. <laughs> Who it was? No, that it was a superhero yeah. movie. Thoughts on the last Wolverine movie? That's I like how you how you spin it at the end there. I'm like, yeah, Logan, Logan. Oh, the last Wolverine movie. Mm. Yeah, I had a, that's a gut shot. It was a really strong first two acts. Like I really liked that James Mangold tried to pull it out of being such an X Men movie. Mm -hmm. He moved it to Japan. He gave uh, Logan this more complex storyline. It was more about dealing with mortality yeah. for somebody who's a, essentially immortal. Yeah. You know. Uh, I always love how X-Men movies exploit the most tragic events in, in human history. Like, there's either an allusion to the Holocaust or the Hiroshima bombing at the beginning of, of Wolverine. So, they're not afraid to try to give their movies weight, which, you know, props to them. But when the samurai, the silver samurai showed up at the end, I was just like, what is this? Yeah. Like, I knew they were going to use the silver samurai, uh -huh. but they did it in such a poor... Like, yeah. The rest of the movie was so, so good. Oh it was. But that ending, I was just like, oh, you, you tripped at the finish line. <laughs> yeah. Why? And that seems like studio notes to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. It was like, we really like what you're doing here, but we're going to need like a big battle thing. Yeah. At the we end. need a big robot. <laughs> <laughs> Transform. Bring in the big robots. When he's going through the village and all the ninjas are like shooting the yes. arrows with ropes, that looked freaking cool. Yes. I'm like, why don't you just make it like him fighting tons more ninjas? Yes. <laughs> Instead no of Silver Samurai, which is actually first debuted in a Daredevil comic. Interesting. Yeah. I think that it, it kind of righted the wrongs of X Men Origins, and it made people more excited about yeah, seeing. Yeah. You could put Logan. a turd on screen, and it <laughs> fixes those. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was very interesting that they they really delved into the him and Jean Grey's like relationship with like any time he would fall asleep, she was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, was cool. And then they kind of brought that into X Men um, Apocalypse and everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you know, writing some of that and all that good stuff. And then there's even an Easter egg of the Essex Corporation at the very end of Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Hey, we saw Apocalypse yeah. and did a review. Um, so. Check that out. <laughs> I, I think Logan looks like it's going to be crazy good. Yeah. Um, the international trailer being one shot different from the green band, it, it kind of added very little to the trailer for me, but it reminds you, hey, this is going to be the first R-rated Wolverine movie. Yeah, where he like shoves his claws through the guy's head and like, they're sticking out. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, we're going to yeah. get some gore in this yeah. one. Yeah. And did you ever... Did either of y'all play the Wolverine game? The like, that origin? Was, yeah, based off the origin. No. It was actually a really good game. It was good a good game. game. It was very good. Movie gore. sucked. Movie sucked. Bad. Game good. <laughs> yeah, the game was good because of the gore in it. Which yeah. is really funny. Because usually it's movie true. games suck mm -hmm. and the movies are good. But this time it was a little vice versa. Yeah. But that it was a, a good, good game. Yeah. Um, I loved the song that was in it. It worked yeah. so perfect. Had a like, good feel to it. When they were playing it, I was like, oh, they did a really good job of picking the music for this trailer. What's really Absolutely. funny is how they had to age Xavier because the guy does not age at all. Like, you look at the guy for the past 40 years, he looks exactly <laughs> yeah, the same. Yeah, he looks like Captain so, Picard still. Yeah, so they have to go in and physically make him look older than what he is. And, mm -hmm. and it, is it just me or does Hugh Jackman look exactly like Mel Gibson in the first shot? <laughs> like, it looks like Bloodfather yeah. at yeah. the beginning. <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of... Serious similarities. You, got, I, you guys, I will post a picture in the group just to show you. It's like, I, the side-by-side -side comparison would be eerie to say the least but yeah i love me some Mel when you so. said the song selection is great when trent reznor says it's johnny cash's song now that's like a pretty high praise you mm -hmm. know like he was basically like i think it'll be remembered oh, as yeah. johnny cash's oh, yeah. song oh yeah which sure. is crazy yeah great trailer great trailer as far as a 90 second piece of art hell yeah, yeah. i'm excited about and the movie. it didn't do what we see a lot of these trailers do now Give us too much. Yeah. But Great there point. are still more trailers coming. Yeah. So they still have a chance to kind of mess up. But that's one thing <laughs> I like to up. see is them not giving us too much. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I, I was reading comments that were on our group and everything. People complaining that it was not the comic, that it's the mutants are not gone or whatever, and it's the government, and it's the villains are supposed to be taking over instead of the good guys, but it's now the government. And complain, complain, complain. Mm -hmm. I think it was great. Yeah. 
when has uh, a comic Freaking, book movie uh, well, followed the comic book exactly to a T? What you got, Batman versus Superman? It followed a lot of comic books at one time. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you are with that. I love that movie, but I mean, <laughs> it leads me truthful. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I really liked it. I thought it was a really good um, trailer and enjoyed it. And then we also yeah, got uh, Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> as well this week. Guardians of the Galaxy 2's trailer. Yeah. Little Groot. So cute. Kind of got overshadowed by Logan to me, but it was yeah. an awesome trailer. It was really good in its yeah. own right. Yeah, I, I thought it was good. I thought it had some good beats to it. I don't know what the crap they're going to do. I want him just to dance. Yeah, I like that shot with Yondu and Rocket walking, and there's like all those Ravagers for just like slow mo falling yeah. around them. You know, I heard Guardians of the Galaxy has the highest body count of like any movie ever. Really? With Nova Corps at the end with the big grid. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but like that couldn't be more people than Alderaan, right? You know what I mean? Mm. But, yeah, but they didn't show them exactly. You know, mm -hmm. there's a planet blowing up. Um, I'm excited for it. It, I, I was way more excited for Logan than that. I think everybody was. Yeah, but Guardians is still gonna be good. Yeah. What gets me is though everyone like complained and moaned and just pitched a fit when uh, Zack Snyder showed Mira or Mara, whatever you want to say. And like it was taken in like natural sunlight and everything. Like this is too dark. And then you have this monochromatic Guardians of the Galaxy, and everybody's like, "Here's my money." <laughs> I'm just like, you people need to get a freaking life and stop yeah. hating on Zack Snyder. Jesus, he's got he's king of the castle, and you're just the dirty rascals. <laughs> <laughs> I think Snyder's doing a great job, and I don't feel like it had a dark look to it. But like you said, it was natural lighting. It's going to be darker than if we if we were to shoot right now without these two lights right here. Natural would, lighting. With nat like yeah, these are our natural lighting. Yeah, yeah. Because we have sun in here. <laughs> like if we were to use outside, like it would be a lot darker. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. I just like that her suit looks so buoyant. Like mm -hmm. it seems like something that would be really easy to swim and not sink in. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I'm just talking crap, dude. It's just so heavy. That was yeah. the same thing about Aquaman that I thought. I was like, man, that stuff. I guess, though, if you want to like stay down at the There's bottom of swimmers. the water. That's the truth, also. The physics they, are they different for them. Dory. And she just keeps swimming. <laughs> oh, well. The, see, just I don't know the comic swimming, books very just well. keep swimming. They don't really, you know... Uh, talk about buoyancy. Uh, that doesn't really... Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, that's where I get plus, hung up with the, with plus, the lore. They have, they're, they're, they're inhumanly strong as well. They're, they have super strength. So they're able to, to, yeah. they're able to swim that's more. That's a good point. So. And hermit crabs have shells. Yeah, and they get around just mm -hmm. fine. Um, <laughs> we'll hit this. This will be uh, the last like non-gaming stuff. We, we went football, then we went movies, now we're going back to football. Um, just real quick. Do you think it's time for Roger Goodell yes. to step down as an NFL commissioner? After the Josh Brown debacle with the Giants and the way it was handled, it's time, oh, wow, there's is a lot. it time to That's go a down? That's a question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Goodell stopped having double standards when it comes to big issues such as this. He basically giving lip service implementing these policies and procedures, but not really enforcing them or even sporadically choosing when to enforce them. Ray Rice was knocked knocked out his wife and was cut <laughs> I can't believe I made those jokes back in the day anyway remember when we played yep, Destiny I do, okay. I do. Um, <laughs> I was letting you keep going uh, wife was cut in the was cut from the team immediately the Giants knew about Josh Brown abusing his wife almost a year ago and gave him a contract extension and then it surfaced that and Goodell didn't act on it and then another basically slapping him on the wrist and by suspending him I think it's time for a front office chain. I actually can weigh in on this one. This is about concussions, right? This is about a guy that's not just doing his job. Isn't he the one that talked about implementing all the new safety regulations, safety regulations to yeah. prevent people from getting concussions because they started attaching it to behavioral shit? Yeah. Like you look at uh, a lot <clears throat> of these older NFL players who are, you know, either uh, dying from brain-related injuries or committing suicide. Or even your Chris Benoit yeah. from, from WWE, mm -hmm. uh, which they're actually making a biopic called Crossface about yeah. that, which will be a sticky situation because you kind of want to sympathize with these yeah. people because they took so many blows to the freaking head over the years, but then at the same time, it's like, they know what they're getting paid mm -hmm. for. Is it really the responsibility of the commissioner 
Is that what he now, is? To, yeah. To, I guess it is his responsibility. Now, he, I know, like, he's done a lot, uh, not enough, but he's doing a lot to try to, to fix a lot of the issues. But what Derek is more talking about is Ray Rice was in an elevator and he jacked his wife, knocked her out, and he dragged her out of the... the there was also the incident, Damn. Josh, uh, Josh Brown, uh, he is physically, mentally, and emotionally has been abusing his wife for years, and the front office has known about this, and Ray Rice, as soon as he punched his wife, cut, cut. no he pay, was he, he was done, in the, he still has not made it back, and he has tried to fix his image, he's been, he's been helping battered women and everything like that, um, trying to, to show that, you know, he is sorry, and he can't get a second chance, but you have people like Greg Hardy and Josh Brown. Greg Hardy did ten times worse things than Ray Rice did, you know, physically abusing people, not showing that he didn't care. Like he would flip off people. I mean, he was just a horrible person. But yet, Roger Goodell gave him uh, a suspension, but let him come back into the uh, and and team signed him, but they won't sign Ray Rice. Josh Brown, they've known about this for over a year. And he still, he just got suspended last week. So was there like surveillance footage of the one with Ray Rice yeah. and they have evidence on him well, and then the other hard, guy, it's more hearsay. Is Ray Rice a better or worse player than I think the Ray other Rice guy? Was... He, like, he, had, he had been great until that, that year that he did that. This He was having a down year, but he was still young enough to where every player, you look at AP, you look at anybody in the league, they're going to have bring up AP because he also got in trouble for beating his child but uh, you look at that and you see that people are going to have down years and I think that a lot of these players like you know I think you know AP was just disciplined yeah he went overboard with it but I feel like Roger Goodell should have you know an equal policy for all of this if you, if you break these rules you hurt a woman you hurt a child you you drink and drive or you you get caught with not you know, performance enhancing drugs, you know, you should get yeah, all right, hey, you do this again. Or I mean if it's hitting a woman or anything like that, you should be done right there. Mm -hmm. But if it's like performance enhancing stuff, you get a warning and then or that stuff. Or anything like that. Yeah. But if you're hitting a woman or a child or anything like that, you should be done. Well, one thing you don't see like with the NBA, you don't see any of that. Like if somebody messes up they they're get usually by, gone. They, they don't you know, it's not oh well it's LeBron or anything. It's you mess up, Adam Silver is going to put the hammer down on you. Unless you're Kobe. Well, we're not going to go there. <laughs> All right, moving on to gaming news. We're going to wrap this up pretty quickly. Okay. Sorry, that's a huge subject for Yeah, this. I know. You're, you went really football on us. And me and... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more football than Jerry. Like, we yeah. both, I, I started glazing over. <laughs> I don't know anything about football. But I okay. do think the concussion thing is is fascinating because it, yeah. it crosses over multiple. Did you watch sports. the movie, con uh, the concussion movie with Will Smith in it? Look, I'm gonna tell the truth. I did not see it. Guys, I tried. I tried to move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry. Oh, Ruin your segue. Um. So we'll go first question here. Derek Daniel said. Again. So. Zach. <laughs> I saw the pic of you with the PSVR. So spill the beans. How is it? Um. Uh, had John. Luvi and Anthony Luvi bring over their PSVR um, this past week. You can go check out their Twitch channel. It's Blizzard2621. Let me check that out while I talk about it. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, setup sucks. <laughs> like, it sucks. Like, setting up that thing was a beast because I had the two cameras going, then I had this headset. And they didn't bring the extension cord to it, so it's like this, like long of a wire <laughs> that has a box, and it's my Blizzard two six two one. You can check that out. Thanks, guys, for bringing that over and let me play with. Sounds it. Sounds fun. Um, <laughs> and not like a euphemism for anything. But once we got it set up, and like I downloaded um, the Batman Arkham VR game just because I wanted to play it. You wanted, wanted to be Batman. I wanted to be Batman. I don't blame you. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm not going to go into the whole camera thing. Like, it takes a while to set up and get it to run right. That's just the nature of the beast. It's like anything else that you deal with that's technology based. It's going to take a while. Is there a calibration thing involved? There is, but it doesn't really like tell you like because I had the camera here, then I put it up there, and I moved it all around to get it right, and it was 
It took a while. I should have also warned people not to move the camera while you have the headset yes. on. Yes, God, I felt like someone was like hitting me upside the head with a hammer because like the whole world was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a really bad uh, like handy cam video of like someone getting in a fight. So as you're <laughs> moving your head, the, somebody's moving the camera yeah. and it's creating yeah. even more motion. That's yeah. that's crazy. Um, but it was really, really cool uh, getting to be in that world, getting to see it. Like, it was completely 360. I could turn around, like, the very opening, um, like, um, menu or whatever, you're at the GCPD, and, like, you're looking over Gotham, and you can see everything. You turn around and see the GCPD back here. That's awesome. See all, it's really, really cool. Um, it can make you really motion sick. I'm just going to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, so get your motion patches ready. How are the graphics? Graphics-wise, it's like in headset, it looks nice. They're not super high quality. Like they're not like 1080p or anything like that. But and with the headset and it being close and it making you feel immersed, like it doesn't have to be that high. Sure. Uh, but like our the recording that'll be up sometime this week on the gaming channel, Nerdcave Gaming. Uh, like the projection onto the TV is about 480, so it's not anywhere near what a uh, regular game is. Now. Sure, um, but it feels very immersive. Uh, the one thing that I don't like is the controllers. Like you have to use the Move controllers, and Move controllers are really old technology, mm -hmm. like last generation. So I'm hoping that they develop something that's a little bit newer to go with this down the road. Because like you put your hands up, and they're like, oh, like you have. Like Parkinson's or whatever. <laughs> You're holding on to two vibrators, basically. <laughs> Whoa, this is awesome. It's like I'm skiing. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really, really cool. It's really immersive. The graphics look good. It's just getting the focus and everything. Uh, it can make you tired. That's a lot of cons. What, what do you do in the game? Do you Did you fight somebody? No, no. Like, this one is like you're solving crimes. It's more like a telltale yeah. Batman. Yeah, more that way, um, like... You, the, the let's play that I was doing, like you find Dick Grayson dead. So like, that's pretty you, crazy. You are like trying to piece together the crime scene of like how he got killed and everything, and who. That's killed a him. cool, interesting. And, yeah, that's a cool storyline. So the further that goes on, I didn't play more than thirty minutes just because it took so long to set up. But I think it's a really cool thing. I think having it set up and like getting used to it, there, there's really a curve to getting used to having that. Headset. I can imagine. Um, just experiencing it a little bit. This is not something that's going to replace normal gaming. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that is going to be an hour, two hours at max every other day, every three days. But it's not going to replace like normal gaming. You're going to see in like 50 years people still having the controller in their hand and looking at a TV. Well, and you said something interesting. It, it, eventually, the the quality of graphics are going to cap out, and there's not going to be any way to impress people with just oh look, the graphics are a little bit better than last gen. Mm -hmm. So each studio is trying a different thing, and we're going to talk about what Nintendo is doing, you know, here yeah. in a minute. But this VR is kind of the the other direction, the yeah. other side of advancements of technology. When you look down. Do you see the bat suit? No, like you look down and you can see like your utility belt. Like you'll have your batarangs and like you can grab them and throw them and everything. And I want a grappling hook, hook yeah, you and I want to ride in the Batmobile. You get to do both of those. It's, yeah, sold. So, okay. He sold. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool. I, it's Right now, it's experiences more than full games. Like there's a few full games, but I haven't played them. But it's more of an experience right now. So when you start seeing... Um, like Skyrim or something like that being like a full on game locomotion the hardest thing right now is like getting you to actually move, move. how do you get to move and everything because like in Batman like you'll look and it'll tell you like to press the button and then you'll like jump over there like it'll just like pop you over there and then other games like you're in a cart or whatever and it's like on rail shooter so mm -hmm. getting that locomotion I Understood. think is the hardest because you're you are moving your brain is saying you're moving you're moving you're doing all of this but your body's still and like it's telling you you're not moving so now if you have the bukus of bukus of money you can get the little the little circle yeah, the thing, little thing where you, can where run you run just run it. like that but you know not everybody has bukus of bukus of money no, that i'm fascinated as hell that sounds awesome yeah and i'll be doing more of those let's plays and everything so check out the i'll have the let's play and then i'll have the bloopers of us trying <laughs> to set it up and all of the crazy stuff that went along nice. with that but it was really really fun i can't wait to play more i want my own headset but it's going to be a few months before i get my own but i think it's really really cool